Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar, an introduction to the Australian Medicines terminology. The topics we will cover today are introduction to clinical terminology, an overview of the Australian Medicines terminology, AMT scope, content and use cases, AMT model and its components, AMT reference sets, how can the AMT be used, and National Clinical Terminology Service website. Before we get started, I would like to acknowledge that this presentation includes SNOMED CT, which is used by permission of the International Health Terminology Standards Development Organization. This slide talks a little bit about the Australian Digital Health Agency. The agency is funded by all Australian governments. It designs and operates national digital health services and sets data standards and national specifications for the benefit of consumers and healthcare professionals, that is, the entire spectrum of healthcare. And just a little bit about the National Clinical Terminology Service, or NCTS. It operates as the Australian National Release Centre for SNOMED International, and in fact has been a member of SNOMED International since its establishment in 2007. The main purpose of the NCTS is to facilitate and support the correct use of national clinical terminologies within healthcare in Australia, essentially to be a one-stop shop for clinical terminology solutions. Our work is delivered under the Interoperability Program of the Agency COAG Funded Work Plan. Now we'll go through an overview of clinical terminology. If you think about language and communicating ideas, words are not enough to convey your message. This is because concepts are more than words, as the same word could have different clinical meanings. Take cold as an example. It could mean chronic obstructive lung disease. It could describe the sensation of feeling cold or the temperature. Or it could mean the common cold. You need more context to know how to interpret the word cold. The flip side of this is that one idea or concept could be expressed in many different words. In healthcare, there are many different specialties and clinicians you interact with, and each one can have a different way of expressing the same thing. The specialist may record a diagnosis as renal cancer, whereas the surgeon refers to it as malignant tumour of kidney. The nurse knows it as CA renal, and the radiographer sees a renal malignant tumour. Humans are fairly quickly able to discern whether they mean the same thing, which is the concept in the middle, malignant tumour of kidney disorder, but it is very difficult for a machine or a clinical information system to be able to do so. Machines are much more adept at handling coded and structured data, and this is one of the challenges as we start to build up the digital health ecosystem. So it is really important to understand the meaning and the context around a particular concept to understand the true meaning of the clinical concept. What we really want to do is ensure that the integrity of the message is the same when it is passed from one person or system to another. So why clinical terminology? As the healthcare landscape is becoming more digitized, there are a broad range of clinical systems, tools and apps used in healthcare. These require coded and structured data. Clinical terminology is that coded and structured data and is a foundation that determines the successful outcome of many national digital health strategic priorities, including health information that is available whenever and wherever it's needed, health information that can be exchanged securely, high quality data with commonly understood meaning that can be used with confidence, and better availability and access to prescriptions and medicines information. So what is clinical terminology? Clinical terminology is a structured vocabulary used in clinical practice intended to be implemented in software applications as its primary use case. It is a standard way of naming and identifying concepts relevant to healthcare, but importantly it has relationships between concepts to provide context to meaning in a machine readable way. At the most basic level, it allows accurate recording of statements about health and healthcare of an individual patient and these statements can be communicated between systems without loss of detail or a change to meaning. And then it allows the retrieval of those statements to express meaning, that is, when we capture data in a machine-readable way, we can use it to perform queries on the data set, so we can start doing analytics and reporting to various levels of abstraction. 
It also provides a consistent way of indexing, storing, retrieving and aggregating clinical data from structured computerized clinical records to enable analytics. Now we'll go through the Australian Medicines Terminology or AMT. The AMT is a collection of medicinal terms that is systematically organized and computer readable. It is modeled according to international terminology SNOMED CT and is actually part of SNOMED CTAU, which is the Australian edition of SNOMED CT. AMT is for use by humans and computers, so it does have human readable descriptions that are linked to computer readable identifiers or codes. It delivers standardized identification of brand or trade products and their equivalent generic medicines, along with their associated components. Those components would be things that start to define and give context to those concepts. It seeks to represent definitional knowledge, so that is things that are always true about that medicine, and has a standard naming convention defined by editorial rules. Because of this, it continuously evolves as we gain more knowledge and are able to define more things about medicines. Now let's talk about the structure of the AMT. At its core, the AMT comprises of three core components called concepts, which are designed to cover medicines and their defining attributes, descriptions that are human readable terms assigned to the concepts, and relationships that link the concepts together. Every one of these components has a unique ID associated with it. There is a comprehensive history tracking mechanism so that all changes made within the terminology are recorded and tracked over time. We can also determine what a concept meant at a particular point in time. The AMT also has extensions, which is a way of adding more information to the core components of concepts, descriptions and relationships. This is achieved by reference sets, which we'll talk about in a later slide. So how does it all fit together? Let's start with concepts, which are the centre of the terminology. A concept is an object of thought. It is designated by a unique code, which is a concept identifier, and covers medicines and their defining attributes. The clouds we have here show a few different content areas. Starting on the top, we have codeine, which is a medicinal product, and has an ID which is the unique code to help machines identify this concept, plus a human readable description. Moving clockwise, we have Actinol Combi D, which is a trade product, and next is a Cyclovir 200mg tablet, 50 tablets, which describes a medicinal product pack. At the bottom, we have a modified release injection dose form concept, which is a qualifier that will be used to help define a concept. And finally, we have a concept that describes a trade product pack. Descriptions are the human readable names assigned to each of the concepts. The cloud or concept is a container trade product pack, which is the most granular AMT concept for a paraven product. The first description is the fully specified name or FSN and is the unambiguous description of a concept. It generally includes all the information about the attributes of a particular concept and at the end of the term you can see a word in brackets which we call a semantic tag. This is what tells us where the concept lives within the SOMED CT hierarchy. So as mentioned in this case, it is a CTPP. Importantly, it also contains the active ingredient, which is oxyrutins, which is the international non-proprietary name or INN for this substance. The next description is the preferred term, which is the most common way that a concept is described. And it is the recommended term that is presented on the user interface for clinicians to interact with. It is also the description that is used in storage and communication, for example, clinical documents that are shared between systems. You can see here that it is a shorter, more user-friendly term. There are optionally one or more acceptable synonyms, which are other ways of describing the same concept. So in this case, we have one other acceptable synonym that alternatively describes the active ingredients. Synonyms are there to aid searching, so for example, a clinician can type in terms that they are familiar with, but they all connect back to the same concept. Hydroxyethylrutocides was traditionally the Australian approved name, so including this as part of a synonym still brings up the relevant brand, so paraben, if users search via hydroxyethylrutocides. 
Each description has their own unique identifier, which you can see as the SCTID in each of the description boxes. All of these descriptions are linked back to the concept identifier in the cloud. So now we'll cover relationships. Relationships are links between concepts within AMT. They are there for two reasons. One is to facilitate meaning, that is, hold atomic bits of meaning. Taking a Bacavir 300 milligram tablet, which is a medicinal product unit of use, it has four attribute relationships. A has Australian boss of a Bacavir, and a has intended active ingredient of a Bacavir, a has manufactured dose form of tablet, and a has unit of use of tablet. These help to define the meaning of this concept. Another reason for relationships is to create hierarchies or a tree-like structure which aid navigation and retrieval. These are called ISA relationships or supertype subtype relationships. In this particular example, a Bacavir 300 milligram tablet has an ISA relationship to medicinal product unit of use and another ISA relationship to a Bacavir, which describes the medicinal product. A concept can have multiple ISA relationships and that is how you get a tree-like structure in SNOMED CT. Just some things to note. AMT is not a classification system because it has a tree-like structure instead, and it's not memorizable. There are meaningless identifiers linked to a concept. The identifiers are there to uniquely identify a concept so the concept is able to be processed and read by a computer system. That is, the AMT is not just for human readership. It is not able to be printed out and used as a reference book and shouldn't replace or displace other instruments. So it should be used in conjunction with non-terminology products to deliver a medication management system. It could be linked in and used with knowledge bases and clinical guidelines to help develop clinical decision support, but it doesn't replace any of that. It is to be used in conjunction with. So moving on now to AMT scope, what it contains, and some use cases. The scope of the AMT is to include medicines that are available in Australia for the treatment of human patients. The medicines addressed include the majority of registered items from the TGA's Australian Register of Therapeutic Goods and a lot of the listed items from the register. All PBS and RPBS items are included in the AMT, so for example, dressings, diagnostic strips and nutritional supplements, and then any other items as requested by users. So for example, there might be some non-approved medicines that are accessed under the special access scheme. And although they are not registered, they are used in Australia and would be added to the AMT in certain cases. Items that are out of scope are listed on the right. And generally, they are items that are only applicable to individual patients or settings or are not considered as medicines or not used for human patients in Australia. The AMT contains a few different groups of concepts. There are the Australian product concepts such as medicinal product, medicinal product unit of use, medicinal product pack, and then their equivalent trade concepts. These seven concepts are the seven notable product concepts that are the basis of the AMT model, which we'll go into more detail later. We also have the Australian qualifier concepts, which include things like container type, form, unit of measure and unit of use. And these are the attributes that help to define or give context to the product concepts. Finally, we have Australian substance or medicinal substance, which highlights the active ingredient contained in those products. Here are a few examples taken from the shrimp terminology browser. In the first slime, we are looking at a medicinal product concept in the Australian product hierarchy. And the example highlighted in red is Abacavir plus Lamivudine. And it shows links to all the different related concepts that have more or less meaning. On the second line, we can see that medicinal product links all the way down to a trade product unit of use. And then on the bottom line, we can see that Australian product eventually links all the way down to a container trade product pack. This next slide has examples of the Australian substance hierarchy. It contains base medicinal substances such as paracetamol, 
and modifications to these bases such as the salt candesartan siloxetil and hydration status such as codeine phosphate hemihydrate. So it is important to clarify the distinction between medicines terminology and medicines information. There's a wide variety of knowledge about medicines that is not included in a terminology. So the terminology is information that must always be true about the medicine. That is a defining characteristic. And in contrast, knowledge can change over time. Knowledge can be linked to product descriptions through the terminology, but won't be contained within the terminology itself. Looking at a few different types of information about a product, things like the product name, pack size, strength, dose form, and unit of use will always be considered part of the terminology because they will always be the same and always be true. Whereas things like clinical indication or adverse reactions can change over time. Same with things like drug interactions or dose. So this sort of information would not be contained within the terminology itself. The current use case statement says that the AMT identifies all commonly used medicines in Australia and can be implemented in clinical information systems to support prescribing, recording, medicines review, issuing, which includes dispensing, medicines administration, and also the transfer of information between systems and the ability to retain meaning and context when done so. Looking at the diagram here describing the steps in the medication management cycle, you can see on the right hand side that AMT supports pack and dose based prescribing and dispensing through recording of a medicine's order or prescription, also the review of a medicine order or prescription, and then the issuing or dispensing of a medicine. Moving around the diagram, you can see AMT supports administration of medicines by describing the unit of use, that is the physical tablet, for example, that's administered to the patient, and being able to record that information. Then finally, it also supports interoperability or the transfer of verified information between clinical systems because meaning is retained through the use of terminology. The next diagram gives us a few more use cases for terminologies, this time in the context of the patient journey through the healthcare system. So you have the patient submitted to a hospital and each of the yellow circles show where or how the AMT might be used in the healthcare system. It may be that it is used for medication reconciliation on admission. It might be used for the prescriber to order a particular medication and then used for the issuing or dispensing of that medication, the recording of the administration of that medication and also reconciliation on discharge. Then into the community setting, being able to use terminology for prescribing and dispensing of medicines. Now we'll have a look at the AMT model and the components and how they all link together. This diagram shows the full model of AMT. It's quite detailed and we'll go through a more simplified version, but it's handy to know that this is available and you can refer back to it so that you can see how each of the components link together and what attribute relationships they contain. Here is a much more simplified version of the model. The AMT model has seven notable concepts that you can see in the orange and blue boxes. The orange boxes represent the medicinal or generic products, and then the blue represents the trade equivalent. Each of the boxes represents a different level of granularity or detail. So for example, going down the model, you will start to see things like strength, dose form, pack size, and container type. Each of the different concepts support a different use case. Looking at some specific examples, we have a Moxel here, and we've shown each of the different concepts that are associated with the representation of this product. Say we're looking from the trade product, we have the brand name Amoxyl, and the trade product unit of use shows us that it's an Amoxyl 500 milligram capsule. The trade product pack shows us that it has a pack size of 20 capsules, and then the container trade product pack shows us that it comes in a blister pack. Then these concepts are linked back to their medicinal or generic counterparts and helps to group and show that different products are the same or similar in their composition. 
Looking at the next example of panadine, again we see the trade product name of panadine, and the next level down is the individual unit of use of panadine uncoated tablet. Then the pack of 24, and that it's contained in a blister pack down at the container trade product pack level. The trade product unit of use and trade product pack concepts link to medicinal concepts, and there we can see that it is a multiple ingredient product containing paracetamol and codeine. Before we talk about products, let's talk about AMT substances. Substances represent the chemical entities that may act as ingredients of therapeutic goods. They may be chemical elements, compounds, and mixtures. They can be a base or modification of the base. An example of that is in the diagram at the bottom of the slide here. We can see that the base of atropine is within the model and a primary modification of atropine sulfate is also present and a secondary modification of atropine sulfate monohydrate is also contained within the model. Now let's look at the individual notable product concepts that make up the AMT. First of all, we have medicinal product, which is an abstract representation of the intended active ingredients or substances without strength and form, which when formulated as a therapeutic good are intended for use in treating or preventing disease in humans. So the medicinal product is the simplest concept within the model. And moving on to the next slide, we can see that it links to the medicinal product unit of use. The medicinal product unit of use is an abstract concept represented by the medicinal product name, but also adding more information about the strength, the form, and where it's appropriate, the unit of use as well. The medicinal product unit of use may represent the name of a primary or secondary modified base, and this happens for safety reasons or where the representation of strength is based on a modification of the active. So the basis of strength substance, or BOS, is defined as part of the MPUU, and it is the active ingredient describing the product's strength as defined in the product registration details and product information or consumer medicines information documents. It can vary from the medicinal product, and we see that in the diagram here where the basis of strength substance is diclofenac potassium, which is representative of the published strength of 25 milligram, whereas the medicinal product or intended active ingredient is diclofenac. Just looking at a couple of different sources of information, we can see from the product registration information from the TGA, as well as the product label and the CMI, that the strength is 25 milligram, and that the basis of strength substance associated with that is diclofenac potassium. And so for that reason, we can specify that the basis of strength substance is the potassium form. Now moving on to the medicinal product pack. From this diagram, we can see additional information is included in this level of the concept. The medicinal product pack is an abstract concept of a marketable medicinal entity, which is available for patient use, but it is devoid of brand and container type. The medicinal product pack represents the properties of one or more quantitatively equivalent trade product packs. And the quantitatively equivalent trade product packs are those that have the same active ingredient, same strength, dose form, and pack size. Moving on to the trade product, the trade product represents the product brand name either for a single component product or components of a multi-component product. The trade product name may also include any additional detail that is required for identification of a particular product, and it is used to define the trade side of the notable concepts and distinguish them from their generic counterparts. So as an example with Voltaren, there are different types of Voltaren that are distinguished with additional information. So we have Voltaren, Voltaren Emil Gel, Voltaren Opta, Voltaren Osteo, and Voltaren Rapid. Moving on now to the trade product unit of use. The trade product unit of use is a single dose unit of a finished dose form, unless the product is a continuous dosage form, so say a liquid or cream, that contains a specified amount of an active ingredient and is grouped within a particular trade product. So for this example, we can see that the trade product unit of use is linked to Voltaren Rapid trade product name, 
which differentiates it from its medicinal counterpart of diclofenac potassium 25 mg tablet. TPUUs have an ISA relationship to MPUUs. For example, we can see that a medicinal product unit of use of Ramipril 1.25 mg tablet is selected here, and it shows us a number of different trade or branded concepts that are associated with it, essentially grouping all of the concept that are linked to that generic concept. So looking now at the trade product pack, the trade product pack is a packaged product that is supplied for direct patient use, but is still devoid of container type. A trade product pack may contain multiple trade product unit of uses, and each of these may or may not be available for supply as an independent prescribable product. And looking back at the hierarchy again, we have a medicinal product pack of Ramipril 1.25 mg tablet with a quantity of 30, and we can see a number of relationships to lots of different branded equivalents, this time trade product packs. The final concept of the seven notable concepts is the container trade product pack. This concept represents the packaged product that is supplied for direct patient use and includes the details of the container type at this level. The container type defines the type of container that immediately covers the medicine. This is the packaging that directly covers the unit of use, such as a blister pack for a tablet or a sachet for a patch. And both of those would be placed inside a box, for example, which is considered secondary packaging. The container trade product pack has attributes including the brand name or trade product name, the types and number of units that it contains, and the container type. To round off this discussion, apart from medicinal substance and products, the AMT also includes a number of different types of concepts that help to define them. This includes qualifiers that describe container type, for example a vial or blister pack, Dose forms, such as injection or tablet, units of measure, say milligram or gram, and units of use, such as tablet. This also includes numerical values that can be read and used for calculations, such as strength, unit of use size, so how big is the mass or volume, the unit of use quantity, so how many in a pack, and the subpack quantity, if the pack contains subpacks. Concept permanence is an important feature of the AMT. Once released, a concept persists forever in the terminology. It can be inactivated and replaced by another concept. So for example, a change in our source data that we rely on, a change in editorial policies or business rules, for example, around the presentation of the description, or a concept was erroneously created. A description that is associated with a concept may change due to changes in spelling or casing or word order, but the concept itself will remain unchanged. Codes will not disappear and will not be reused, which is especially important when you start thinking of health records spanning the life of a patient. In terms of discontinued products, the AMT will continue to represent products that are discontinued from the market as active concepts. This is because they will still be valid to be recorded in an electronic health record. So for example with Nizoral 200 mg tablet, even though this product was discontinued back in December 2013, it's still included in the terminology to enable the recording of past prescriptions or a previous dispense record of a patient. So it allows historical data to be retained and recognised within records. Implementers will need to have their own process to mark a product as discontinued, for example to flag in their system the discontinued date. There are editorial rules that govern the development of terminology content, which focus on the naming conventions and rules associated with description types for concepts in the AMT model. The editorial rules can change over time and can evolve to handle and model new content as it becomes available. The editorial rules are published as part of the documentation on the NCTS website, so they are accessible to users. Any changes are documented in the release note, which is the documentation that goes out with the content that is released every month. 
Let's talk a little bit about reference sets because you'll often hear this term when people talk about SNOMED CTAU. Reference sets are extensions to the terminology for a specific purpose. They identify subsets of content and support a range of granularity and specificity. The most common reference sets are subsets, where we create small bite-sized chunks of the terminology to help with implementation. However, there are other types of reference sets, such as mapping or association reference sets, where information can be added to the terminology that's not part of the modelling. In the diagram, we have a blue box representing all of SNOMED CTAU, which includes the AMT, and we also provide the data in reference sets for implementation. The biggest type of reference set are the foundational reference sets in the green boxes on the left, which comprise of all concepts within a top-level hierarchy. So for example, Container Trade Product Pack reference set groups all of the Container Trade Product Pack concepts and allows them to be used for a particular purpose, such as binding to a drop-down box. On the right are the non-subset types of reference sets, such as the ARTGID reference set, which maps the ARTGID from the TGA to a container trade product pack. And we also have the strength reference set, which provides the normalized strength for each product. Reference sets filter the core components for the desired content. So one way is to think of them as an index that helps you find content in the core components. The other way to think about them is that they add on non-defining information to core concepts. Several reference sets may be used at once and you can use combinations of reference sets to get the data that you need. For example, you can start with a grouping reference set, such as the Container Trade Product Pack reference set, which give you the concepts you need, so in this example the grey circles. And then join the descriptions table to get the human readable terms. However, you need to overlay the Australian English language reference set on the descriptions to get the preferred terms, which are the purple rectangles. So how can the AMT be used? Before we look at how it's used in a system, let's see how the use of clinical terminology impacts clinicians. Well, clinicians don't need to remember any codes because the codes aren't memorizable, unlike ICD-10, and they don't need to learn a new language or do anything extra. In fact, they shouldn't even see the codes because they are for machine readability only. But what you can do is use the synonyms to aid search effectiveness. And actually, clinicians shouldn't even realize that they're using SNOMED CT. The next couple of slides show examples of how the AMT can be used in a clinical system. Here we have a pick list, and each of the elements in the list is derived from a reference set. Each selection can constrain possible values for other elements and results in a selected concept. So for example, an active ingredient pick list may include the medicinal product reference set and the brand would be the trade product reference set. Pick lists are only suitable when a short list can be presented to the user. Another way to implement the terminology is with a search function and we recommend this when the user is selecting from a large list of items. It is also possible to combine several reference sets if more than one is suitable for selection. In this example, the trade product reference set and the trade product unit of use reference set may be used together for the pick list. So the brand name is searched and brings up either of these types of concepts available for selection. It's important to note that the experience with using the AMT can be vendor specific and it's critical to have good search functionality. When you're busy and you're trying to search for a term, it's frustrating when you can't find what you need or there are too many irrelevant results that come up. A poor implementation, unfortunately, can lead to a poor user experience with the terminology. However, there is guidance and support available from us, the NCTS team, to help vendors navigate the structure, give advice on pitfalls to avoid and ongoing maintenance, and troubleshoot any issues that might come up. Some useful skills for AMT implementation include knowledge of clinical practices and healthcare, database capabilities, change and configuration management, and collaboration skills. 
Here are a few case studies where AMT has been implemented. Eastern Health provides one of the largest metropolitan public health services in Victoria. They were a fairly early adopter of the AMT and it is used within their clinical systems, Cerner Millennium for medication orders and Merlin for dispensing. After deploying these clinical systems, they reported significant reductions in the number of pharmacist interventions when there was errors with the drug dose or quantities or appropriate documentation for PBS items or controlled drugs. One hospital also reported that 100% of their patients have their allergy status recorded. Health Direct Australia have a website that allows consumers to search for information about their medicines. They use the AMT as a reference terminology and because of the seven notable concepts model, they're able to create extensive mappings between other data sets to display comprehensive medicines information to users. We just wanted to finish off with some slides about the NCTS website, where you can find more information and resources, you can download the data if you're a license holder, and you can also submit requests for content. This is the landing page when you visit our website, www.healthterminologies.gov.au, and I'll take you through the main sections. You can navigate either by the blue numbered boxes at the bottom of the screen or the title bar menu at the top. Then you can visit specific pages using the menus on the left hand side of the screen. Here we are in the learn section where you can find general information about the benefits of clinical terminology, as well as some high level information about SNOMED CTAU and AMT. There is also information about the available file formats. We have the traditional RF2 release files which conform to SNOMED CT specifications, as well as FHIR resources that support the emerging standard for exchange of healthcare information. If you want to look at our reference sets to see what kind of content is in there, we also publish TSV value sets which give you both the concept IDs and human readable terms of members of a reference set in a single file. An important resource is the document library where you can find all of our documentation. It is categorized by introductory, business, clinical and technical to help you find the appropriate resource. Another important section is around licensing as you need to hold a license to access the terminology. You can read the licensing agreements there and find out more about licensing obligations before registering. The access set of pages is where you can download the data and note that you need to log in to be able to do so. The reference sets page allows you to search for a particular reference set and when you click on the icon in the view column, you can read more about the description and scope, whether it's bound to any clinical information models and other metadata. If you click on the release bundles, you'll find six months worth of RF2 files, including the most current release. There are four file types available, full, snapshot, delta, and all, and the release note which contains important information about each release. For your convenience, we have a link here to some technical guides and sample scripts produced by ourselves and also SNOMED International to get you started with your implementation. We also have a section regarding the tools we provide to help you use the terminology. Developers may be interested in our terminology servers, which are technical solutions we provide as part of the NCTS to reduce the burden of terminology adoption by vendors. Please contact us if you want to find out more about these products. Terminology browsers are probably the best way for a learner to play around with the terminology because they're freely available and accessible online. We have links to the CSIRO Shrimp browser and the one provided by SNOMED International. Here are screenshots for the CSIRO Shrimp browser and on the top right you can type in search terms to find a concept and you can also click around the hierarchy view on the left to see how concepts relate to each other in the hierarchy. 
There is also a property box on the bottom right, which shows important properties of a concept, such as all the descriptions associated with the concept, whether it's active and when it was released in the terminology. You can also constrain the search via a reference set if that's what you're interested in. So here I have searched for Ramapril 1.25 milligram tablet and in the middle it shows where the concept sits in the hierarchy. On the bottom left is a picture representing the modeling of the concept where you can see all of the relationships that define the meaning of the concept and the bottom right shows the properties. Snap a map is a tool that allows you to create maps between local code sets in SNOMED CT. You need to have a login for our website to be able to access Snap a map. This is a screenshot of the Snap a mapping tool. The mapping editor in the middle is the main section where you work on your maps. The source data is your local code set and the target is SNOMED CT with the hierarchy shown in the category column. One of the features of Snapper is the auto map function, where it will compare your source data to SNOMED CT descriptions to find a match. You can tell from the status column that auto map was used and still needs to be validated by a human reviewer. The map column describes the relationship of the target to the source, and if there is no match, auto map will leave the target column blank. When you click on a mapped row, which is highlighted in blue, the target will be shown in the hierarchy view, and just like the shrimp browser, you can click around to look at other related concepts. The property box gives you the information about the target concept. You are also able to search SNOMED CT for other possible matches, and if you want to manually map a result, you are able to drag and drop it into the target column. The request page allows you to submit new content or suggestions for terminology improvement. You can submit single requests or download the batch request submission form and email to our help centre. We have come to the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening. Please contact our help centre if you have any questions or would like support for your implementation. Details are on the slide here. Goodbye.